Yeah, you're going to kind of overtake somebody. Yeah, overtake. <laughs> go, girl. Go, girl. It's your birthday. Go, girl. Say hello to the Marital Mice folks. Hey guys, <laughs> this is your athletic champion. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to <laughs> Welcome to Marital Miles. Featuring the stationary bike. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> The garage edition. <laughs> <laughs> you know that can be the name, right? <laughs> yeah. Today it is so cold that I can't go outside and go out. I just cannot. It's in the forties. I don't business who wants it. It warm, it's cold. So I'm doing miles on my stationary bike. And this is just something that we do, my wife and I, when we, you know, cannot walk our regular regular exercise in the evening and stuff. So today we are picking up more on the uh, love language and we are doing physical touch this morning. Come look at what I do, you know, baby, come show them. Pretty much what I do is just get on my bike and then use my tablet to pick up a, you know, a scene, a biking scene. And then, yeah. Just follow this scenery for a while. We turn off the light. And once we turn off the light, we are in the zone. Well, the garage door won't make us be great. But yeah. So that's how we do it. But today we're talking about the five love language. We're continuing with our series. And we are going on to physical touch. So let's get into it. All right. Physical touch is... A very important part of any relationship and looking at the love languages physical touch is even more so a way in which we can tell each other that we love each other physical touch as soon as we mention physical touch immediately I know that most men their mind gone to intimacy and it's not necessarily intimacy you know physical touch takes so much more um, different road than intimacy. Intimacy is probably the least important part of physical touch, right? For many persons, they want to know that the person cares about them and no matter how much they say it, no matter how much accolades they give them, no matter how much things they buy them, no matter how much they serve around the house, if they never touch the other person, if they never um, experience any type of physical bonding them them not believe say you love them because that's their love language and my ear you see the bike I make my go and see yeah man the bike I work me out me do one one point three eight miles already wow yeah and with the virtual reality thing you map chat you want to see me all the turn like so I lean around the corner when I go in the corner them, you know. <laughs> lean around the corner. <sighs> Trust me. Anyway. So as I said before, physical touch is not just saying um, you know, intimacy, going in the bed. You know, which most people think, okay, for instance, many Jamaican men may think that yeah, if I can have if I can be sexually proud proud what the word? What the word? Like proudness. What's the word? There's a word. That them, you know, if you, if you think you are so macho that you can do it good, then that's supposed to please your, your spouse. That's not true. <laughs> they might be pleased in the, in the act of having sex, but it does not translate to I love you. Because for the most part, you know, sex brings the other person satisfaction as well. The person who is engaging in sex, it's, it's, it's mutually satisfying to some extent. But when you can touch somebody physically without intimacy, when you can soothe a, a headache by resting somebody's head on your shoulder, when somebody work hard and come in from work and you can just squeeze their hand, you can give them a hug, you can give them a little kiss, me not a tongue out kiss, me not like a pet, like a little peck on the cheek. Chooks. Look at chokes. <laughs> Those things translate into great deep meaning for the person whose love language is physical touch you get what I'm saying 
you may have people, for instance, who were traumatized by rape, for instance. And the act of having intimate or intercourse brings back some negative memories to them. Mm -hmm. For that person, you may want to just cuddle and make that person know that you're there for them, that you consider them more than just their physical attributes or consider what you can get from them. By the way, do you know that physical touch also increases your immune um, immunity? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Physical touch also decreases your stress. Mm -hmm. you I know? think it releases um, some hormones in the body that, you know, Some type triggers. of something. And on of oxymorphine or something, something. Mm -hmm. not a doctor. Leave me alone. <laughs> Just leave me alone. <laughs> but it does trigger good hormones. So the point I'm making is, if your spouse, their love language is, is physical touch, then definitely they will want to experience that more from you. For those of us who may be highly erratic in their, in their outlook and feel like every time that we consider physical touch, it has to be something sexual, we may also be taking using this time to, as a lesson in how to approach your spouse without always wanting that. How to approach your spouse, how to be physical with your spouse without taking it over the top, where it don't have to go, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, and that in itself um, gives the, the spouse the assurance that they're not just considered to be a piece of meat, exactly. or just not just there for that fulfillment, but you know. Exactly. Just, just that sense of security that you feel, or that comfort, or that assurance that you get by just patting the person on the back or you know holding the person's hand to, to indicate that you know i'm i'm with you we're 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 partners together it, it 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 has a mental or emotional um impact yeah a, a general sense of well-being mm -hmm. i know for me like sometimes when i'm having a stressful day and i get i get a little one hug from you it's like you're saying to me Without saying it, you're saying it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to get that. I know that there's no other motive behind it other than you just generally love the person. You generally mm -hmm. want the person's well-being. You know? You know, um, per sorry, personally for me, you know that when I'm feeling something physical in terms of not feeling well physically. Turn the camera around. You don't want to turn the camera around? I don't know. When I'm not feeling well physically, why I gotta look busted? No. You don't look busted. Look at you the rider. Right. <laughs> yeah, when I don't feel well physically and you just get that embrace. I don't know if it's my mind, but almost immediately you, you tend to feel better physically just by being touched physically or embraced physically by, right. by your um, significant other. Now, as I said before, many persons don't rate physical touch outside of intimacy as a genuine love language. You know, most people want to address um, intimacy as the major touch, the big thing, but it's not. It's not. And so, as we go about our day, as we do what we do, remember, guys, in exploring your spouse and your relationship, consider if they want to be touched. The next thing is this, we have to be careful that we try to touch our spouse where and when they don't want to be touched. Mm -hmm. That can make or break the day. Yeah, you, you, have, <laughs> you have to have a certain level of respect for the person's wishes. I mean, yes, the Bible does speak to the fact that, oh, from a sexual level, you are not supposed to withhold right. that from, from your, your husband or your wife. However... You still have to be sensitive. And there's a time and place for everything. There's a time and place for everything. You know, don't, first thing, physical touch is not something that you demand. <laughs> I can't say to my wife, listen, I'm not feeling good, so I demand you hug me. Mm -hmm. That you, don't you work. You work 12 <laughs> hours today and you're tired, but too bad, too sad. I need, <laughs> you know, I need what I need. Come hug me because I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. Kiss me, you fool. That, no, then something that can't work. <laughs> Physical touch is something that is brought on um, intuitively. 
by individuals who are considering their partner or the person the the hugger is considering the huggy <laughs> <laughs> yes, and considering mama. their mental state their the, the considering how they can comfort them how they can give up themselves to them mm -hmm. and it turns out in physical touch do you know that if you are going somewhere that you have never been before and your partner gently squeezes your hand in the middle of that uncertainty it brings a level of security mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like saying listen don't worry i'm here right 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 you know do you know that when when somebody is is feeling regret feeling remorse feeling tragedy a simple hug just a comfortable hug changes the whole dimension of that feeling these are some of the things, especially, I'm speaking to men now, especially for men, that we need to invest in. Learning what our partner needs and how to apply it. Without leaving them to feel like any motive, ulterior motive is there. Right. You know, some men hug them spouse and immediately, you know, a sort of physical changes are happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Things start to move around and... No they, hug, they hug and start go lower. <laughs> I mean, you understand what I mean? Right. You're supposed to not having a good day, your girlfriend not having a good day, your wife not having a good day, and you can't hug her on her shoulder. You have to slide your hand down. Right. For cup of feel, for get yourself involved. Sometimes we have to get past us and just reach out to our spouse and reach out to our partner and let them feel loved and let them know you love them from that level without uttering a word. Mm -hmm. So. Those are my few words today. And you have to be in tune with your, your partner. You have to have such a connection that you know without a shadow of a doubt that, listen, they need a touch right now, mm -hmm. or guess what? Don't come near me right Don't, now. Do not. You know, so <laughs> be sensitive. And guess what? Your, your spouse, the, the spouse who needs that physical touch will know what your motives are. Mm -hmm. Because they will sense it inside of them, they will know, you know, sent to hug me because I'm really concerned about me now. Or sent to just a try feel on me, you know, mm -hmm. just a try feel me up. You don't need your partner to be wondering what's your motive when you're physically touching them. Mm -hmm. You need them to be a certain um, that you love them and that you're, you're doing whatever you're doing with their best interests at heart. Sure that. And that's the real essence of physical touch. So as we continue on with our marital miles, hopefully the, the temperature will go down. We could have chance it today, but we never had one. But hopefully the temperature will go down. We'll continue to do it on the street. Um, so far, let me see how far I'm going. 4.6 miles I done. But I have a question for you, but maybe yes, it's for another video. Go ahead. It might be too long. Go ahead. All right. So how do you um, speak to a couple who may have a wife who been through some trauma and they are not very receptive, like you mentioned before, to anything sexual because of that prior trauma. But then you have a husband who has a high sex drive. How do you bridge the gap between one not wanting or no not? One wanting. Yeah. One want too much and one no one none. Right. How, how do you? Okay, well, the first principle of marriage is compromise. That's the first principle of marriage. Okay. So, as part of my job as a, as a husband is to meet the needs of my wife. That's the first thing. And as part of her job as my wife is to meet the needs of her husband. Now, yes, she has been through trauma, but she has to come to the place in her relationship where she trusts the person that she's with and not the person that traumatized her. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, we can complicate the situation and say, suppose that the man traumatized her. <laughs> <laughs> right. If that is the case, then trust has to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Cannot have a relationship without trust. It will not go anywhere. So, she has to come to that place where she trusts that he has her best interest at heart. That's the first thing. Then he also know the greater. I think the greater um, responsibility is on him right. to never put her back in that place where she feels threatened or the trauma is brought up. Her the approach to her has to be different. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, as much as she can relate the situation to him, because if she keeping it a secret, for instance, her traumatization, <laughs> if there's such a word, if she keeping it a secret, then he will not know. He will not know, right? How to approach her. So there has to be that level where they both come together, they both compromise. Compromise in the sense where trust that this man loves me and that whatever he wants to do, whatever touch he's touching me, is not for my detriment. Mm -hmm. And he's not taking advantage of me. Right. Now that's his responsibility to assure I have him not taking advantage of her. Because even though, for instance, let's use sex, it is satisfying to most men. If a man is not exploring ways to satisfy his spouse then he is literally telling her i really don't care about you <laughs> which a lot of men end up in that situation because once the intimacy start it's all about them oh yes please myself oh i need this to be done to me and then not really turn the black of them eye and look up to say what's going on with my partner is she enjoying this you know are they you know you understand is there ways in which i can make it be comfortable and memorable and enjoying for her. You see me? Right. So it's a, it, I, I think, again, compromise is the answer on both sides. And I do hope that I answered your question. You certainly did. Amen. Hallelujah. Hot color, Lou Brenda. Well, I'm going to corner. Well, I'm going to round the corner. Yeah, man. So guys, again, like, share, subscribe. If you're enjoying the Marital Maya series, Please drop it in the comments. If you have questions, drop it in the comments. What I don't know, I don't know. I will look it up and I will tell you what it says on Google or whatever. What I do know, I'll answer as honestly as I can. And there are questions that I may not answer. If it's too personal or too derogative or anything like that. You know, but aside from that, we'll do our best to keep you updated. And we have more love languages coming next Wednesday, guys. Next Wednesday, we'll have more for drop. So, big up on the sale and peace. <laughs> show them the bicycle, show them the bicycle. Guys, you are told me. May I get a shot? May I pour up on the bicycle? Hmm. I'll do the bicycle now, don't we? It's going somewhere. Go to the corner, go to the corner. Go to the corner, go to the corner.